Today, we're gonna find out what is the best way to cool a 12900K. Okay, so here we have a delitted 12900K, and here are our weapons of choice. On the left, we have our stock IHS, which is gonna be our baseline. In the middle here, we have a rocket cool copper IHS, and on the right, we have, I don't even know how you, it's, it's like a direct die IHS. So this is actually from a company called Super Cool, and you have to actually contact them through Facebook, not even Marketplace, you just have to find them on Facebook and DM the guy if you want one of these things. But essentially, I don't know why, uh, the, essentially what it is, is you have your IHS here, right? You have it in the socket, you put the direct die mount on it, like so, you clamp it in the socket, then you take the water block and you mount it over top while it's actually in the board in the case. Now the idea here is you get direct water cooling on the IHS but without having to use direct die frames. And personally, I've never gotten direct die frames to work even like 50% of the time. Like there's always some problems with those things. So, the water block we're going to be using is an EK Vector one here. Um, the reason we're going to be using this one is because it's nickel plated. And we're also going to be using liquid metal on all of these. We're not going to be using any paste today. It's going to be all liquid metal to show the best cooling performance. The weapon of choice for liquid metal is just this cheap stuff I've been buying off Amazon. It works great. It's cheap. I'll leave a link to it down below if you want to pick some up. I don't, I don't buy no overpriced brand name shit. Now, the test bench today is going to be our Z690 Unify X 12900K. Uh, this is the floor PC. Now, see, I've already got like a loop going here with the 360 thick rad, but we're not going to be using the uh, Raystorm Pro today. Even though this water block does perform better than the EK one, this one has a copper base. And if you go watch my video, the previous to this one, I don't want to use a copper base with a copper IHS. It's just going to be big problems. So let's get started. We're going to throw this in first with the stock IHS, get some base numbers. We're going to be running Cinebench for our spike load test. Then we're going to do 20 minutes of OCCT for sustained load test. Now, for the load test, to be honest, I don't see too much of a difference here. I mean, we might be surprised. Where we're really going to see the difference is in those really high current drawing temperature spikes. That's what we're after. We want, us, we want one of these to absorb as much temperature as possible as it spikes. That's what gives us our stability in games. Okay, that's good. I'm going to put this on here. And let's go throw her in. All right, there we go, she's in. Now we're gonna do the same thing to both of these surfaces. I already got the water block swapped around, but yeah, liquid metal on both of these surfaces now. All right, here we go. One, two, and let's put it on. Okay, so we're up and running and we're posted here. So I set the V core to 1.35. We did load line five on the Unify X. So let's do a Cinebench first, see what happens run OCCT for 20 minutes to kind of warm up the water a little bit, and then we'll run Cinebench again after to get some baseline numbers. Okay, let's hit the run button. See what kind of temps we got here while the water is cold. Okay, Cinebench is going. We are at 74 Celsius on the package, and we're pulling 1.33 droop. 240 watts round there very 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 good result for this okay so we're doing OCCT we are at 215 210 watts ish and as she's pulling 65 66 Celsius right now so we'll be back in 20 minutes when the water warms up a little bit and then see what the temperature is after
while that's going, I wanted to take a quick second to thank the supporters of the channel. Rocket Cool and Super Cool did not send me these. I had to buy these with your guys' money for independent testing. That's how we roll on this channel. So if you want to continue to see independent testing like this, but you can't afford to support, the best thing that you can do is leave a comment down below and just say thanks to all the supporters, because without them, this would not be possible. Okay, we're finished 20 minutes here, and it looks like the maximum temperature that we saw was 88. That was a temperature spike. Average was 75. Okay, so we're going to write these down. Let's run Cinebench quickly while the water is hot. All right. Oops. And let's see the difference. Okay. She's going. And now we are at a temperature of 83. All right. So 83 Celsius after the water has been warmed up for 20 minutes. Okay, stock IHS. We got the Cinebench cold result, 67 Celsius. OCCT maximum core hotness, 88. Average was 75. And Cinebench with the water hot was 83. Okay, next up on the list. Let's see how the copper IHS does. Now the copper IHS isn't just copper. It has about... I don't know how much percentage, I think it's like 20 something percent more actual surface area. So this should perform better in theory. Um, I'm not sure the exact percentage, check their website to make sure. But um, yeah, let's throw this in now and check it out. Okay, we're running the copper IHS now. I waited 30 minutes, but I don't think the water is as cold as it was on the first run here. But I'm not going to wait all day for this. So keep that in mind. Let's do a cold run first. See what happens. Yeah, the water's still definitely warm, so we'll have to ignore the previous data here. Okay, so let's run OCCT for 20 minutes first then, and then we'll just ignore the cold numbers because I don't have time to wait for the water to cool down that far. So let's just go right into OCCT here and do this for 20 minutes. Also again, uh, voltage 1.337, 215 watts. Uh, exact same settings as it was before. Okay, we're coming up on 20 minutes here, and we got max of 86 and an average of 75. So the average is the same, which is obviously to be expected. Uh, but yeah, it absorbed a 2 degree Celsius transient a little bit better. So um, let's run Cinebench here quickly and get the result. And also keep in mind the water was harder, uh, hotter this time around. So let's see what this does. Okay. So we're at 83 Celsius. I think that's pretty much the exact same. Yeah, it is. It's the exact same. So, I mean, it absorbs transients better, but you're still limited by the temperature of the water here. It's the exact same all around. Okay. On to the direct eye. Okay, so I've got the super cool direct die kit in there now. Actually, I can see this. It's not focusing. There we go. And then now, once it's actually clamped in, now I have to actually put the block on. So like this. And then screw it on. And then put two fitting. And then I got to drain the loop and then assemble it while it's already clamped down there. That's kind of the... Um, the trick to this. So you can't, you can't actually remove the CPU ever without draining your entire loop and getting the hoses off, right? So that's the only caveat with this uh, system, I want to say. But other than that, it seems to be quite ingenious how he designed, or they, he, how they designed this. It's a pretty good idea. Like, so you get the clamping force of an IHS, but you get the cooling power of direct to die. Well, I'm assuming anyway. So I'm going to go drain the loop now, assemble this, and then we're going to get some numbers. Okay, there we go, it's in. See, it's all bolted down. It comes with this um, RGB kind of bracket that goes over top here like this, uh, in case you wanna bolt it down, but you actually don't have to. I'm pretty sure this bracket is just to get RGB. It doesn't actually provide any uh, 
clamping power down on, not when the actual mechanism itself does all the clamping for you. So you can leave it like this, theoretically, or you can put this on top if you want, uh, you know, some RGB. But anyway. Nice, looks good. No leaks, no problems. I mean, yeah, everything seems to be okay. So let's, uh, I was just checking for leaks here. All right, we are a go with the direct die kit here. Looks like the uh, the idle temperatures are a bit lower, which is uh, promising. Let's do a cold run here just for kicks because why not? Uh, let's see. Uh, looks about the same, doesn't it? I'm not sure what the water temperature is right now, but that doesn't look to be any better than the other two. So let's do some OCCT and then we'll check again. Okay, let's press go. Engage, number one. Oh yeah, that does look lower. I will give it that, 1.334. 210, looks a little bit less wattage too, maybe because it's running so much colder. But yeah, this actually looks legit so far. So let's let this run for 20 minutes and then we will check the maximums. Okay, we are coming up on 20 minutes here and the results are quite impressive here. So we have a maximum temperature of a spike load temperature of 79 Celsius. We have an average of 67.5. So, wait, what was it again? 79. Seven, nine, average of 67.5. So our transient load temperature over at the copper IHS was seven degrees Celsius cooler with the super cool direct eye. Average temperature, seven, almost eight, seven and a half. Seven and a half degrees cooler on an average. So this is, this is the big... This is the big money here. This makes a big difference. Now with the water hot, let's go run Cinebench quickly here. Okay. So this is gonna be for all the marbles after 21 minutes of baking it. Let's run a Cinebench here. I am uh, quite surprised at how well this thing does. Let's check this out here. So hot, all right. 76, 77, so that's uh, six degrees cooler, six degrees cooler, seven, yeah, 76, 76 C, so over stock, so over stock here, 88 to 7, that's nine degrees cooler, minus nine degrees, from the average 75 to 67.5, that's eight and a half? No, sorry, seven and a half. 7.5 degrees. And from 83 to 76 on a hot center bench, that is, I don't even know what that is, seven. Seven Celsius cooler. So, with that in mind, so for 50, so I calculated how much money it actually cost me to buy these. Um, this, these prices are including the shipping. Um, I did, I don't know how much I spent on the actual shipping versus the actual product, but it was $133 for the IHS or the, the direct die shipped. This was $53 for the rocket cool off copper IHS shipped to can remember this is Canada as well. I'm in, I'm in Canada, right? So for $53 to me in Canada, I got a two degree Celsius improvement on the transients. Same on the other ones. So I'm gonna hard pass on this. Can't be bothered with that. But for, I would say maybe 110% more money, almost, a little bit over double. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is the goat. I think this is the goat. Um, they, this super cool has my business. 
So I guess I'm going to be running this on my personal rig now. I haven't seen results like this anywhere else. So this is like, this is quite the goat. By the time this video goes live, I will have already shared these results with the, my legendary supporters. So they've already got their orders in. That's the perks that they get. Um, legendaries, if you're watching, you need me to delid your CPU for you as well. Let me know. And we'll get you set up with a, this goat of a system here. So you also got to keep in mind that you can only use this product with a custom loop. If you are stuck on an AIO, then maybe, you know what I mean? It depends. It's not, it's still not worth $50, but you know, if, if you need the two Celsius for some reason, or if you're on the raggedy edge, okay, then I guess you're stuck with an AIO. You can get this and it's a little better, but I figured that the results kind of make sense because the die, if you want to look at this, the size of the die here, I mean, the total area between these two IHSs isn't that much different. Like, like, like this, this IHS is more than sufficient to disperse that heat just from the size of the die relative to the IHS. Or like Intel did a good job making this thing big and making it thick, right? So these were much more valuable in previous generations, but this generation, meh, right? Kind of meh. Boys, when I finish my personal build, we're going to see some next level FPS. We're going to see FPS at such a level that no other builder is going to come even close to my numbers. I've just been biding my time getting all the components ready. Getting all my god bin ducks in a row, if you will. So if you actually are wanting to get one of these super cool things, I'll put up a picture here of the Facebook store that I DM'd to get one. You gotta just DM the guy on Facebook. I don't know of a better way to actually get one of these things. He also did send me a D-Lid tool for free. I haven't tested it. It looks like a really nice piece, but I have not used it yet to confirm whether it works or not because I didn't want to risk it on a 12900K. When I do my 12600K content, I will D-Lid it with this one. And that way I'll keep you guys up to date if this is actually worth buying. But as of right now, I don't know. I only know that the direct die kit works. Anyway, super cool. Very impressed with the product. Very easy to use. Um, if you guys know me, those of you in the Discord, you know that I hate direct die frames. I've just had no luck with those things. Memory channels turning off, all that horse shit. I'm just not a fan of them. This thing was the perfect solution for me. It uses the stock clamping mechanism. Sure, it's a little bit of a hassle to get the water block on afterwards, but that's just like a small far cry of me not wasting time trying to get a direct die frame to work. This is the way to go. Remember, all my reviews on this channel are paid for by the supporters. No shilling here. Shout out to uh, Fuko in the Discord for bringing this product to my attention. I never would have heard of this thing if it wasn't for this guy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below. We have... 12600K and 12700K content coming up real soon. Also paid for by supporters. Seeing a trend here? Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.